I have a dog that can ride a skateboard. After I made a video of it, YouTube Shorts started showing me videos of dogs riding a one-wheeled skateboard. I had never seen anything like that before, but I was immediately fascinated and wanted to build something like that myself. So I did a bit of research online and come across the float wheel, an open source project that I would love to recreate, but with my own twist and adapted to my own fabrication possibilities. I will start the project by 3D printing all the components, using my A1 Mini, and then building a prototype. This prototype will serve as a reference for developing my own version of the one wheel later on. Since my A1 Mini is quite small, I need to print the parts in smaller sections and assemble them into a walking prototype. I connect the individual parts with superglue and a hot glue gun. To make the superglue cure faster, I use sodium carbonate, a trick I recently learned from a model maker. Additionally, I reinforce some of the connections with small metal pins to make the construction even more stable. When I see all these tiny puzzle pieces, I really have to say, a larger 3D printer would be pretty useful. Right now, this is just a prototype, but when I print the wheel parts in the next video, having a larger build volume would definitely help. If you know of any 3D printer that is affordable and has a larger build volume, I would really appreciate it if you could let me know in the comments, that would really help me out. Even though so, it's just a prototype, I'm seeing C milling the foot pads out of wood, following the original float wheel design. This way I can get a rough idea of what to expect and understand what really matters when I make the actually foot pads in the future. Unfortunately, I didn't record the entire assembly process, but trust me, I had to do a lot of improvising to get all the parts glued together. But that's not a big deal, because this prototype is really just about figuring out what I need to watch out for. How much space do I have for the tire? How big can the battery be? How much room is there for the controller, the BMS and all the other electronic components? And before I forget, we also need to make sure Yuki fits on the board. But I don't think she feels completely safe when I look at her. Ok, let's move on to the electronic components. I'll be running the one wheel with VASC. This open source platform combines both hardware and software, making it perfect for a wide range of electric devices. I'll be powering the board with this 4kW monster, but it comes with a tire that's way too narrow. I definitely need to find a wider replacement for it. To avoid having to buy all the parts separately, I decided to go with this one wheel kit. For the battery, I initially bought an e-scooter battery, which I disassembly and rebuilt into my own 22SP battery. I also got a new BMS, but I only use it for charging. I had to pay over 150 bucks for shipping and almost the same amount again in taxes. To make things worse, my package was delivered to the wrong city and had to be forwarded to me later by another customer, who had received it by mistake. Look at this massive battery. It has a total of 52 cells, but when I take it apart for my DIY battery, I'll only need 40 of them. I'll be connecting these battery cells to this BMS. It already comes with a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi antenna, along with all the necessary cables. The footpad sensor, the main fuse, many of the necessary cables, the power switch, the motor controller and the 4kW motor along with the tire, all of this was delivered in this box from Spintin. Looks like Yuki is already getting curious about the one wheel. First, I'll build a test stand so I can securely test the motor. For this, I'll construct a simple wooden frame that I can later mount firmly on my desk. In the later part of the video, I'll temporarily connect the electronics to check if everything works. Once all of this is done, I'll be able to see what really matters for the future redesign of the float wheel. What should I actually call what I'm building? Can I call it a one wheel or is that a trademark issue? Is it still a float wheel even so I'll be modifying the design? I've also heard of the name fun wheel. Which name would be the safest to use? 
Let me know if you have any insights. Don't even ask why I'm painting the motor test stand and designing a nice cover for the screws to 3D paint. Alright, let's start with the electronic test setup. To give you an overview, I've created a rough sketch that roughly represents what I'm planning. First, I won't build the new battery yet. Instead, I'll attach two thick cables for positive and negative directly to the battery to bypass the BMS when running the motor. To prevent any issues, I'm connecting an anti-spark connector to these cables, which then leads to a 120 amp fuse that protects the motor controller. My regular soldering iron isn't powerful enough for such thick cables. Luckily, I inherited this massive 150 watt soldering iron from my grandpa. <laughs> and judging by how it looks, it might as well be from World War II. To make sure the battery doesn't overheat during testing, I've temporarily installed it a sensor. Since my motor already comes with pre-installed wing terminals, I'll first attach them to my motor controller so I can temporarily screw them in for the test setup. Whether I'll keep using them later, I haven't decided yet. I've already soldered the Bluetooth module and the two footpad sensors together. I'm connecting them to a small adapter board, which allows me to link all three components to the COM port. Since the new BMS can communicate via CAN, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, I'm connecting it to the motor controller for testing. Instead of using the battery, I'm powering it with my lab power supply. Now, the only thing left is to connect the battery to the motor controller. The fuse acts as a central connection point. So, let's start the test. Now, I'm connecting the VEST tool to the motor controller via Bluetooth. After configuration everything, I can finally test if the motor works. Nice one, it works, but it wasn't as easy as it looks. I spent days learning the software and debugging everything. If the motor seems slow, that's intentional. In my first unrecorded test, I used too much power and it hit so hard it damaged my test stand. What's important now is to test whether the footpad sensors are detected correctly and provide accurate readings. In the graph we can see that they are working as intended. The harder I press, the lower the resistance. Once a certain threshold is reached, the motor is activated. To start riding, I tilt the board which makes the motor accelerate. This works because the motor controller has a built-in gyroscope that detects when I lean forward or backward and instantly adjusts the speed. In the next video, I build a larger and safer footpad sensor, since the ones I bought feel too small. I also bought my own 22SP battery with 72 volts and a continuous discharge of 60 amps. Alright, see you in the next one.